The last microfluidic platform we're going to talk about is droplet-based droplet -based microfluidics. The concept is extremely simple. Imagine I have a microfluidic channel and I have a constant flow through it, a flow Q that is rather large. And then I make a little side channel here and I'm going to send another Q in here, another flow. So I call this Q1 and this Q2 that is small, much smaller than Q1. So a little flow. So we have a main flow going on and here I have a little flow. And also important, I make sure that the liquid in Q2 and Q1 are not mixable. So for example, Q1 I have oil, typically. And here I have a watery liquid. So water and oil doesn't mix. So let's draw my watery liquid in red. So what happens is I, I come with a small flow here. I have a large oil flow going to the system. And I start pressing my little water droplet in here. Surface tension will keep it together. We'll keep it together. And this will start being dragged. Here it will start being dragged along by the oil. So it will start looking something like this. And after a while it does something like this this and then something happens you break off a droplet and the droplet will move on here into the channel and this will jump back to its original state yeah? so i have ejected a droplet and then we'll start again grow 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 and inject the next droplet so and the next so i'll get a train of droplets here red droplets in this oh, that are one after the other in a very repeatable manner if i control q1 and q2 well i get an extremely repeatable droplet train of watery droplets in oil. Now the thing is that you can do this process in microfluidics rather fast, rather very fast, like typically 1,000 to 10,000 droplets per second. Yeah. I'm an oil stream and I make 10,000 watery droplets per second in that oil stream. And now there was a guy seeing that and he thought, well, every little water droplet in oil is entirely isolated. The only thing it sees is oil around it. It's an isolated water droplet. I think this, I see this as a one chemical reactor, and I see this as another chemical reactor, and I see this as a third. So he says, I make 10,000 chemical reactions per sec reactors per second, every droplet being a chemical reactor. And then you can start doing very high throughput uh, chemistry. Yeah, you can do 10,000 reactions per second. Uh, what, how, of course, just one droplet is not interesting, but what happens if you put another droplet in that here, for example, and you get two droplets and you tune those. So you get, for example, liquid A and liquid B here, and then they merge. They will merge into one droplet, basically. So you can, can get A plus B reactions. You have people that say, well, let's put living cells in it, like diluted blood. And then they put white and red blood cells. They're going to select cells. And then every droplet either has one cell or zero cells, and they're going to follow how are these cells growing. They put those in a system. They can have them for several days in a channel, like bumping around and around and around. And they can follow every cell one by one. How does the cell behave? For example, I add a human cell here and I add a drug that nobody has tested before. And I make a thousand samples or 10,000 cells with drug one and then 10,000 cells with drug two. And then you can individually start following all of these droplets and seeing how do these droplets behave, how do the cells behave. So this is a, a fantastic tool for high throughput screening. <clears throat> and there's a number of things you can do. There's even people growing entire animals on it, such as uh, uh, the C. elegans. And I have some pictures of that here. You have that also in your slide. So these are C. elegans. Uh, um, little worms that they that they grow. So they put them in as eggs and then they grow as entire worms of a millimeter long in this kind of droplets. <clears throat> so this is a new type of uh, platform that is starting to be used a lot. It's used, for example, for um, steered evolution. Yeah, you can uh, speed up evolutionary processes by uh, having certain cell lines and then exposing them to toxin and see, you know, the 10% best are the ones that you select out and then you're going to breed those and then give another toxin and then you can breed cells, for example, that are very resistant against a certain drug or, for example, you know, you can do selected evolution, things like that. Um, this is a, a, a kind of platform that's only been existing since uh, five years or so, so we haven't seen the end of it yet, I think. Um... Um, <coughs> there are a number of fundamental operations you can do fluidically 
and you can see that in this slide so you can generate the droplets here you see uh, sorry for me everything is mirrored when I look at it here so here you see the droplets how they're being generated so it's not you actually you have the oil coming from two different sides and the, and the, the sample liquid from the top um, here you can see how these things are stored in a, in a big channel and where they just sit and wait you can use dielectrophoresis here you can see that so these are electrodes and basically if you have a for example a cell with a different parameter <coughs> different uh, physiology will have a different dielectric constant so will <coughs> it will react differently to an electrical pulse so it may be steered either to the top channel or to the bottom channel here and another thing you can do is for example merging droplets here you can see that here this is you can't see that here but um, there's a video in the next uh, the next video you see all of these operations actually how they look in reality and this is a video by the company Raindance that has commercialized this platform and so you can buy this it's being sold for one for cancer screening and secondly for fundamental research so uh, that's the next video a video from Raindance